hello, hello. We are back. We're back. I got my nephew's computer. Hallelujah. Um, I'll give everybody about five minutes to uh, see the be started, and uh, we'll get started in a second. So I'll give everybody about five minutes to, to see the message generate, and then we'll get started. All righty, let me make put a post on Facebook to be started so everybody can know. So I'm posting on Facebook that everybody know we, we resumed. I apologize for the inconvenience we had. One moment, please. All righty. I don't see anybody in the chat, but I think sometimes people will be in the chat and I can't see them. They message the people who were in 
I saw some people were actually in the group when I was in the group when I was when I was live. Let them know we began. You see, uh, oh, that's me now. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, what is the other group? Okay. We're going to get ahead and get started. I don't know if the people, I don't see anybody in the chat, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Let me see. Let me go to YouTube and see Facebook. Let's see if anybody's in the chat. We don't see anybody's in here. Okay. I don't see anybody in here, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me uh, notify everybody we started. All right. Let me go ahead and open up a prayer again. I apologize. Uh, I was having some problems with my device. They were saying that I was breaking up. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started again. We open up in prayer and start all over again. Well, Lord, thank you that we found out that we were breaking up. Thank you, Pastor Odara, letting me know that. Pray you bring Miss Kelly back in. I think her name was Elise, I think. And everybody else who was here, Lord, I pray that they would see that we started again. Bring them back. Well, I feel your anointing. Thank you for your anointing that's here. I decrease that you might increase, Lord. Have your way. I pray that whatever you want me to say, I'm going to say. I pray that I will say everything accurately and concisely and by power. I pray for your power to be here, Holy Spirit. I invite you, Father. I invite you, Jesus. I invite you, Holy Spirit. Forgive us for all of our sins. I pray that you speak to me, speak through me exactly what's needed, Lord God. Give me the examples and the scriptures and everything to say. Grant me utterance. I pray, Lord God, that you'll give me the spirit. I pray that everybody will have the spirit, that you give everybody the spirit of the knowledge of your will and always my spiritual understanding. Pray, Lord God, that they will walk worthy of you, Lord God, fully pleasing to you, being fruitful in every good work. Can you grant us, Lord God, according to your will, to be filled with the knowledge of you? Let me say, what's the other one? What's the other one, Lord God? Well, I thank you, Lord God, that you'll give us all the information and revelation we need to say. Give me utterance, Lord God, have your way. I decrease as you might increase, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't see anybody in the, the chat, but that's on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and get started again. We were discussing, we're discussing anger. We're discussing what anger is. And next week, we're going to start talking about how to manage anger. But today we're going to talk about what is anger and the three ways anger manifests. That's today's topic today. What is anger and what are the three ways anger manifests? And also, why does anger happen? So what I talked about from the beginning was I gave you the definition of anger. And wait a minute. Sorry from uh, Pastor Chris's book. We're reading the book called Overcoming Emotions That Destroy by Pastor Chris Ingram and Dr. Becca Johnson. Two fabulous people who are talking about um, anger and how to stop anger. And what is anger? Anger is a charged, morally neutral emotional response or protective preservation, all right? So anger is charged and full of energy it gets our juices flowing, our hearts pounding, our, our, our minds racing. But anger is morally neutral. It's neither good nor bad. It's simply an emotion or a feeling. And that's an exact quote from their book, Overcome Emotions That Destroy. So anger is neither negative or positive. It's morally neutral. Anger is okay. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Haha, it says, be angry and sin not. The anger is not the problem, it's what we do as a result of our anger is the problem. Anger is kind of like, I'm giving an example, like pain. I'm not saying anger is like pain, I'm giving an example. Like pain is not negative or positive, right? You wouldn't say, oh, that pain is bad. Pain is just a feeling, right? It's neither morally positive or negative. It's just a feeling. And what, what pain does is pain lets you know that something is dangerous. So for an example, if you touch a stove, you'll feel that pain from the hot stove. And that pain from the hot stove lets you know, don't touch that, that will hurt you. Anger is a similar type of emotion. And God lets you know that there is something going on that may or may not be correct. Anger can be justified or unjustified. It's just a response. It's just an emotion. And sometimes we can be angry about things that may or may not be real. For example, what happened on January 6th? People thought that the election was stolen. The election was not stolen. 
And then they went and stormed the Capitol and had an insurrection. Now they were angry about a situation that did not happen. They thought that the election was stolen. It was not stolen. And therefore in anger, and also they wanted to actually go out and change that. So anger can be, it's, it's, posit- it's, it's not either negative or positive. It's a, res- it's a response to something else that's going on. As Pastor Chris said, anger is a secondary emotion. Anger is a response to something else that's going on. And I listed some situations that can make us feel angry. Let me get to that. Now, I'm going to give you some situations, and this is these are some situations that cause us to be angry. All right? This is also from Pastor Chris's book. These are situations that cause anger. Someone cut you off while you were driving. Someone misunderstood what you said. Someone ignored your feelings. A relationship breakup. You feel trapped, smothered, or controlled. You feel like a failure. Someone broke your trust. A past abuse. Someone lied on you. You had to wait in a long line in the checkout counter. Your children were not obeying you. I will add one. Your children were disrespectful to you. The waitress was slow and brought or brought the wrong food. You stubbed your toe. You found out that you you found out too late that you were out of toilet tissue. The line in the public restroom is very, very long. Your spouse forgot to call and they were very late. The clothes you wanted to wear are still in the laundry or hamper and not yet washed. Your spouse has been unfaithful. You were out of time and you weren't able to get some things done that you needed to get done. You drove across town to find out that the store was out of the item that you needed. The kids were continuously and relentlessly nagging you and bothering you. You forgot to do something. They said, demand your time. You forgot to do something you were supposed to do. You have no time for yourself. Someone said something harsh to you or insensitive. A store clerk was rude. You were in a hurry and hit all the red lights. Your boss doesn't appreciate you the way you think that he or she should. Someone tracked dirt into a freshly cleaned house. The driver in front of you is going so slow. Someone close to you died. Now, those are all situations that cause anger. When these things happen, we get, sometimes we feel red. Sometimes people turn red. Their stomach churns. They feel like hot under the collar. They feel, they feel tense. They get upset. They think they, they are, their heart races. These are all Man, this all lets you know that something is not right to you, according to you. Like I said, what you perceive to be not right or injustice may not actually be happening. We discussed that earlier. But nevertheless, you feel angry. Some synonyms, some synonyms of angry are enraged, furious, indignant, mad, seething, infuriated, aggravated, irate, annoyed, bothered, Frustrated, inflammatory, provoked, red hot, riled up, quick or short tempered, ticked off, peeved or hot. So these are all synonyms of anger. And I said that anger is secondary emotion. All right. And what is anger? And what's the purpose of anger? Why did God give us anger? God gave us anger to let us know, number one, that something may be wrong. Just like if you touch a hot stove, you'll know that don't touch that. That's dangerous. Anger also lets you know that something may not be wrong, may be wrong. So anger helps you to, it protects you. All right. For an example, if Pastor Chris talked about a situation where he was at a laundromat and he saw a mother abusing her daughter, her child, and he got very upset. Initially, he threatened to hit her, but he didn't. But it bothered him. And I'm not saying that was right. You can't respond like that, okay? Remember, the anger is okay. It's how we respond sometimes that's the problem. And so, but however, like I said earlier, anger can spur you into action. Anger can actually cause a righteous response. So it's not the anger that's the problem with you, what you do in the anger. In this case, Pastor Chris 
He went to his uh, government office and found out there was a problem of abuse in his area, child abuse in his area. And he actually became the president of a board that helped people who helped neglect and abuse children. And he got all, they got together and had a big, um, they, had, they, bought, they, they um, created a, um, a, a, a place for kids to go who had been abandoned, who had been abused. It was an amazing outcome to an injustice he saw. So like I said, anger can spur you to good action, but sometimes and most times anger causes us to make, to make mistakes. Like I said, anger is a secondary emotion. Your anger lets you know that something is wrong. And these are some things that take place that cause us to be angry. We feel abandoned. People feel let down. Someone doesn't come through. They feel rejected or left out. Lonely, sorrowful. Okay? They can feel hurt. Sometimes people feel hurt. Guilt, shame, powerlessness, betrayed, insecure, dash hopes, feeling trapped, hopelessness, unmet expectations, unmet needs, envy, jealousy, resentment, pride, low self-esteem, failure, sense of worthlessness, loneliness, depression, worry, anxiety, feeling stressed out, pressured, resentment, remorse, exhaustion, fatigue, disappointment, and grief. All these things, and there's others of course, cause the response or emotion of anger. So when these things I just mentioned occur, they cause us to become angry. Now remember, the anger lets you know that something is going on. Just like if you have a car, when you see that red indicator light go off, you can't see everything that's going on in your car. But if you see that red light go off, you know there's something going on wrong with your car. So the anger is kind of like that, that red light. It lets you know that something is going on, possibly, I would say possibly going on wrong somewhere. It's not the anger that's the problem. It's how we respond to the anger that's the problem. I said earlier today that there, I started talking about the three types of ways we respond to anger. The three types of anger ways we manifest anger. And they have three different names. The first name I discuss are called spewers. I am one of those people. A spewer is a, these are the ways spewers respond to anger. I don't do all of these. I'm just giving you a list of things that he listed and things, ways spewers respond to anger. They yell, scream, curse, use hand gestures. We all know what they are. They hit, fight. Some people murder people. When you see people kill everybody, kill people in, in their job after they got fired, that's a manifestation of anger. That's a spewer. They curse, yell, scream, hit, fight, throw things. All those things are outward manifestations of anger. And as I said earlier today, we spewers have to be very, very careful about how we manifest our anger, especially in our words, especially in our words, especially in our words. Because like I said earlier, once you speak a word, you cannot get it back. And like I talked about what happened to my first husband back in, I think, 2010 or before, 2010, 2012, or around that time. He said to me, I used to be overweight. He said to me, all you do is sit down all day, stay at home all day and eat and get fat. Something like that. He said that like at least 10 years ago. I never forgot it. I remember what I was sitting when he said it and everything. And like I think um, Oprah has said, Maya Angelou said, people may not remember everything you did, but they will remember how you made them feel. And if you, sometimes our words make people feel very bad. Sometimes I merge with make people feel scared, trapped, insecure. And then we have to be careful about how we spew our anger because we don't know how we, they're going to retaliate. All right? So there's consequences to your actions, guys. So if you spew and you say you curse somebody out and they beat you up, listen, that is your fault. I saw a woman on YouTube. She was angry with the Uber driver. I think it was an Uber driver or no, she was a, it's a I'm sorry, Amazon driver. And the Amazon driver was taking too long with her packages. And she came out and was yelling at the woman who was getting the package out of the car. And the woman who was the Uber Amazon driver, I don't know if she had a bad day. And the woman was standing over her and she was yelling and screaming at that woman. And the woman hit her. All right. 
So the woman who was Amazon driver hit the woman who was yelling at her for being late. Now, the woman who was yelling at her, she got a negative consequence because she got hit in her face because she was harassing that lady. Now, she was a spewer. Now, the lady who did the hitting, she had a worse situation. She was arrested, and the woman she hit was a, it was like about elderly, but like in her 60s or 70s. Not that she was elderly. She got charged of abuse. I mean, she got choose. I think I don't remember all the exact charges, but I know she got choose. She got charged with hitting the woman and elderly abuse. And right now, I don't know if she got out. This was last year when I saw this. She was in jail. She got put in jail, and her bail was set at one hundred thousand dollars. Now, that was definitely exorbitant for what she did. She just hit the lady. She didn't kill her or beat her. She just hit her one time. I saw it. That judge took that way too far. I don't condone what she did, but that was not worth $100,000. She just hit her. All right. I heard about another woman who hit an Asian woman. Not only did she hit her, she drug her down the street in her car and killed the lady. So this woman murdered a woman. She hit her and drove down the street with the woman and killed the woman. She got maybe like no more than no more than 10 years in jail. So she murdered somebody and didn't even get a serious sentence. This woman just hit this woman one time and had a hundred thousand dollar bond bail. So when we spew, we can't control the consequences to our actions. So, like I was saying before, think before you act. Like I can think about my past Vandalia Pipkin. She talked about how I don't remember this, I must have heard this in the 90s. I don't know what she was talking about, but she was saying that I think she was talking about um responding to somebody and she and the Holy Spirit said to her, don't say nothing. <laughs> if you if you if you ever saw her talk about it, it's hilarious how she said it. And so if spewers, which I am one, Lord gave me this phrase a long time ago. And the phrase was pray and don't say. Pray and don't say. Now that's not always the case. But it's a scripture that says, if you're angry, cover up your mouth. All right? Because once you get angry in your spewer, you may or may not manifest that anger in a godly, wise fashion. In using your spewers, we spew because we feel like if we don't get it out, it's going to drive us bananas. If you're a spewer, shout out to me if that's why. I know for me, I feel like if I don't say something, it's going to drive me bananas. And the Lord told me, Back in August, if I see a particular person doing something, don't say anything, just pray about it and let him handle it. And I told God back in August, I can't do that. I have to say something. Now, after from August to now, I've seen the destruction in my relationship with my fiance of me constantly spewing negativity. Had I listened to God back in August, I would not be where I am today. So, like the Bible says, if you get angry and you're a spewer, like, like Pastor Vonda would say, don't say nothing. <laughs> I can still remember her saying how she said it. It was so hilarious. I'm going to say it again. God remind them, if they get angry, may this come into their mind. And me too. When you get angry, if you're a spewer, don't say nothing. Like the Bible says, cover your mouth, walk away. Take some time, pray, calm down, and ask God, what should you do? Do not, do not, this goes for me too, do not say anything while you're upset. And I'll also thank you, Holy Spirit, something that I heard Joyce Myers say, never make a decision, especially a life important decision while you are angry or having a negative emotion. Don't make any decisions at this time. It's gonna probably most likely be the wrong one. Wait, calm down, pray, wait a couple of days, then decide. Do not make a decision while you're angry. I talked about this before. Your boss is upsetting you. They've done the exact same thing to you 
a billion times. You put turn your work in. What happens when a person doesn't allow you a space to do that? When a person doesn't allow you to, uh, Miss Kelly, they don't allow you to give it, give you opportunity to pray and, and calm down. Is that what you're saying, Miss Kelly? Because I don't understand your question. So you're saying that if you're angry, and you don't have an opportunity to walk away. I would say, like I said, don't say anything. Don't respond. Walk away. Is that if, if that Miss Kelly? I'm going to give you my phone number. Um, and we can talk about this and I can get some more. Let me put this in the chat. This is my phone number. Okay, this is, I'm gonna put my phone number in the chat. Um, I don't know if you're in the United States. After the, the broadcast is over, call me and we'll talk and I might be able to give you a better answer to that. Because I might need to get some more um, detail. So that's my email, my phone number, 240-483-7449. When the broadcast is over, Miss Kelly, call me and I'll get some more, get some more details about the situation and I can respond better. But she was asking you, what happened if you can't, if you can't walk away? I would say the what just don't respond. Especially if you at work too. All right. So Miss Kelly, when you finish after the broadcast over, call me, give me about 10 minutes, like run to the bathroom, and call me back and I'll ask you more questions and I can give you more information. But based on what she her question is, what happened if you don't have you you can't do that? My advice would be. Don't respond. I've had a situation where my sister was yelling and screaming at me in my face. And I'm trying to remember the situation. It was actually an attack of Satan. It wasn't even her upset. We were just moving really powerfully in the spirit. I think I had just finished coming to, and then I came to, God gave me a very powerful revelation about this situation in my, in my marriage powerful revelation and I was meditating on it and thinking about it and then my sister came down and started yelling at me now initially I was yelling back then it hit me this is Satan so I quietly put my head down and I said I rebuke you I whispered she didn't hear me I just whispered very very low I rebuke you Satan in the name of Jesus then I just put my head down and said, she didn't hear me because she was around across the room. She never heard me. It was very, very low. She could not hear me. She stopped dead in her sentence and went upstairs because it was a demon that wasn't her. And so I realized that was an attack and I bound the spirit attacking her and she left. And so sometimes it's also an attack, also Satan attacking you. You have to be conscious of the spirit. I would say this, Miss um, Miss Kelly, if you have the opportunity, quickly pray to yourself, to the Holy Spirit in your head. Lord, help show me what to do. Give me wisdom right now. What should I do? So if you're in a situation, you don't know what to do, just stop in your, in your mind and say, Holy Spirit, help, show me what to do. And he'll show you. The Holy Spirit is your greatest answer for everything. Pastor Aldari and I, who is, who is my who's my fiance, who's our lead pastor, we have had a lot of problems in this area. And a lot of the revelation I'm giving you guys today came from me praying. And so, and for a long time, we didn't see what's going on. And we prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, I had other people praying. And then the Lord started showing me all these things. And so, God is, God is, is, is merciful. If you're in a situation where you don't know what to do, you can just say, Lord, in your mind, if you're around somebody, Lord, I don't know what to do. Help me get me out of this and just cry out to God. Wisdom, help. He'll get you out of it. He'll, he'll send you what you need. That's what I would suggest. Like I said, my sister, actually, was I praying? I think what happened was while she was talking, I was praying in tongues. I was praying in tongues because trying to figure out what was going on. And then the Lord showed me this is an attack. Then I bound Satan and then she stopped and she left. I'm not saying she's Satan. Satan attacked her. And brought her down here because I got an epiphany about our relationship. He was trying to attack us. He was trying to distract me from that situation. And so that's what I would say. And Miss and Miss Kelly, she's going to call me back later. So spewers, we have to think before we speak. Before you say something, think about the consequences. What you want to say? Like I told you, that lady at her house, she got hit in her face by an Amazon delivery person. The Amazon delivery woman is probably still in jail. She had a $100,000 bond, bail. 
our actions have consequences. And if we don't get hit or anything like that, we ruin relationships with our words. I am guilty of that. That is why I'm divorced <laughs> for the, that same reason. So our actions have consequences. Okay. Now the next cat, that one, those are the spewers. Spewers, like I said, are people who yell, scream, kick, fight, bite, curse, all those negative yelling and screaming, hitting people, people get killed, throwing things. Those are our actions of spewers. The second category of people who manifest their anger, they're called stuffers. They're called stuffers. I heard uh, Pastor Robert Madhu uh, make a joke. He said, anger is like a toddler in your car. That an angry toddler in your car. You don't want them in a front seat with you, but you also don't want them in a trunk. Okay? What did he mean by that? If you have an angry toddler in the front with you, they're going to drive you bananas. If they're in a the trunk, they can get hurt. And then you can probably have problems if they get hurt in your trunk. That's the part with spewers, spewers problem. Spewers, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, stuffers, I apologize. Stuffers have this problem. Stuffers sometimes feel that anger is negative. They feel like if they get angry, they may lose control. And, it's, and or, they, or they've had negative experiences with anger in the past and they don't want to be angry or they want to manifest anger in an outward way. So what they do is they stuff it in. They internalize it. They And they just keep pushing it in, keep pushing it in. So someone to yell and scream at them, they don't say anything. They keep them up. And sometimes stuffers cannot tell the truth. You, you may ask a stuffer, st you may, you may sense that, upset, that you did something they upset. You may say, are you upset? A stuff will respond to you and say, oh, no, nothing is wrong. It's, everything is okay. Don't worry about it. On the inside, they're like, you get on my nerves. I hate you. What did you do to me? They're going off on you on the inside, but they're smiling. But on the inside, they're like, going. they're upset. You don't know they're upset, but they pretend like they're not upset. They may not tell you the truth. Remember, we're not going to judge them for that. They don't say why they're upset because sometimes they're scared to manifest anger. They had a bad experience with anger in the past. They don't want to do that to other people. And they don't want to also sometimes, they don't feel like they want to lose control. So instead of manifesting anger like the spewer does, they stuff it. The spewers can endanger themselves. And they, I'm sorry, spewers can endanger themselves by getting hurt by other people or causing other people not to like them in ruin relationships. Stuffers hurt themselves, them own, their own selves, because as they stuff and they stuff and they don't release it, sometimes they get depressed, they get ulcers, diseases. A lot of times I've heard that people are people have various ailments because they're angry and they don't let it out in a positive way. And they end up getting sick. That happened to me because I'm a combination of a stuffer and a spewer. And that is the third category called a leaker. A leaker is a combination of a stuffer and a spewer. A, spe a leaker is like this, the exact same thing. They feel they may feel scared. They may feel, they, they may feel scared to manifest anger. They might've had negative, negative, um, Results of anger in the past, negative relationships with anger in the past, and they don't want to show that anger, okay? They may feel scared they're going to lose control. Those are some of the reasons that they don't say it out. What they do is they are trafficking past, they do two things. They do the stuffing thing and the, and the spewers. They will start off with something called passive aggressive anger. Passive aggressive. What does that mean? Passive means it seems harmless, but it's really aggressive. So it looks harmless on the outside, but it's really an aggressive way of hurting you. Manifestations of what spewers do. You may ask them again, are you angry? No, nothing is wrong. I'm not angry. You don't have anything to worry about. So they're lying to you. On the inside, they're yelling and screaming at you and cussing you out. You just don't hear it. This is how they manifest their anger. They may do things like this, ignore you, not call you for a long time. They may 
show up late for things intentionally that they know give me an example if you are on time if you're a person that's like that's very very timely they will intentionally be late because they know if they're late it's going to annoy you that's another thing pastor chris talked about something he used to do let's say you are driving and you see somebody behind you is weaving in the traffic and it's, it's something that's like something you don't like and they get behind you and with that person what he would do was slow down so he knows they're in a hurry so when they get behind him he would slow down which would drive them bananas because they're in a hurry now he does, he's not going to give them the middle finger or cuss at them but when he slows down that's passive aggressive he's not outwardly hurting them per se but he's doing something he knows is going to irritate them so people who, who are leakers they do things intentionally to irritate you they know it's going to irritate you now so they, they show up late they do things on they do things intentionally to hurt you but it's kind of like you can't really hourly recognize they're doing it per se so they, they'll start speaking to you they'll uh cut you they'll um be late um turn things in late things that you know things that they know is going to irritate you let me give you an example let's say i i did this to my roommate <laughs> so my roommate used to lose her glasses and she i didn't really like her i mean i liked her but we had a, a relationship a bad uh uh not a good relationship so i would see her glasses like sitting somewhere and i would see her running around the house because we were roommates looking for the glasses now i've seen the glasses and her glasses are, like sitting right because i think she left the glasses like sitting like in a in the bathroom i saw the glasses in the bathroom and she was like have you seen my glasses and she's rushing to go to work i saw the glasses i knew what they were i didn't tell her so I knew she needed her glasses. I knew where they were and she was going to be late. I didn't tell her. That was passive aggressive anger because I was trying to manifest anger I had from her and I was trying to hurt her without directly hurting her. Now, leakers also will say little small, smart comments. For an example, my friend Philip said, there's always 80% truth, 80 truth in every joke. They may say, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, you're late. They may say something like, um, I guess you have a hard time being on time. Now, to you, you're like, where did that come from? And it would just come from you out of left field with that. You're not even expecting that. But the going on is they've been upset with you for a long time and they're leaking it. The problem with leakers is this. They start off passive aggressive and then they become spewers. Then they will later on yell, scream, cuss, do things like that. So it'll start off as them stuffing and after a while they'll spew all right so the three ways we manifest anger are people man people manifest anger can be you can be a combination of, of you can be a combination of two of them as well spewers stuffers and leakers now like i said anger itself is not bad it's how we manifest the anger that's bad and that's the whole point of this group one second someone just messaged me Okay, that's not anything important. It's not the anger itself that's bad. It's how we manifest the anger. That's the problem. And so the whole point of this group is to discuss healthy ways of managing anger. So I'm gonna ask you some questions. Oh, let me say one more thing about, um, about leakers and spewers. If you are a leaker, you recognize you a leaker or a spewer. I mean, a leaker or a stuffer. The spewers, we know we're angry. A lot of times, stuffers and leakers don't really recognize they're angry also. And so sometimes when you ask them are they angry, they really don't realize they're angry. They don't. And they're so used to stuffing it, it's like a self-production mechanism. They don't realize it. So if you are a stuffer or a, spe or a leaker, you might want to ask somebody closely that you can trust to tell you when you are doing this. And so you make sure you trust that person. Ask God first. You know, Lord, who should I? I'm, if you, because you, if you're here today, you want to change this. So you can ask somebody. You know, say it's your spouse. If you, if you, the Lord says your spouse, can you tell me when you see me stuffing? Definitely, Pastor Doug. Oh, Pastor Doug. Amen, Pastor Doug. You got my number. Call me whenever you want. Call me whenever you want. Love you, Pastor Doug. Thank you. I met Pastor Doug in the hospital. He's amazing. Um, so if you are a stuffer or a leaker, 
You might want to ask somebody that you trust. When you see me stuffing or leaking, depending on which one you are, let me know. And a person who is a stuffer or a leaker, if they tell you, the person I'm talking to on this, <laughs> press on the door. <laughs> if they tell you you are stuffing or leaking, listen. All right? Because sometimes you don't recognize it. And sometimes you need help. If you are a leaker like me, come back next week. <laughs> Get the book. Because leakers, it's, it's a lot. I, I, okay, I'll go into some of it now. I'm going to talk about this now, but we have some more time. When you get angry, what are some things you do? The first thing, I apologize, pass over, all right? God didn't like that. I apologize. He got, he got mad at me. I apologize, Lord. I apologize. If you are a spewer, a stuffer or a leaker, if you are a spewer, like I said, number one, don't make any decisions while you're angry. Number two, pray and think before you speak. Calm down and think rationally. Walk away before you make a decision. I have just walked away from my sister at different times. Just walk away. Don't walk away with an attitude. Just, just quietly walk away. Take some time. Pray. Calm down. And think. And ask God what you should do. Don't make any decisions while you're angry. Because I will tell you, nine times out of ten, it's going to be the wrong one. And after you do it, it's too late. Like I told you, people will get upset with their boss and they'll say, I'm so tired of this boss. You know, disrespecting me. And they quit. And they go home and say, honey, I'm so tired of, 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 of Bob. He's driving me crazy. I quit. And his wife will say, well, then how are we going to pay the bills? And it's too late at this point. You quit. So spewers, we have to be very careful. Think before you speak. Walk away. Give yourself a couple days, pray, and calm down. Think rationally, ask the Holy Spirit what to do, how to solve the situation, and then respond. Pastor Chris talked about um, if you sometimes, now some situations you do need to say something because depending on the situation, sometimes you do, you may need to confront somebody about what they're doing. And there's nothing wrong with confronting people. It's how you do it when you do it and if you should do it is a problem and so if you are a stuffer a, sp a spewer or a leaker and you want to know how to manifest your anger my number one thing i would say is this ask god what you should do i can give you different strategies but which each person in each situation is different for example pastor pastor uh pastor chris talked about if a person is at work and they're being sexually harassed by their boss now Depending on the company, if you're at some company, you may be able to complain and say something, and maybe they'll do something. What happened if you're being sexually assaulted by the boss and he own he or she owns the company? If you say something, you may lose your job. Classic example, my haircut. The person who cut my hair messed up my hair. You can't see it. It's pressed down, especially in the back. I didn't notice it until the day after the day later. And then my sister noticed that she was standing above me and she noticed it. In the back, it's really messed up. Now, in the United States, you can go and complain, get your money back. You can work that out or they can redo it. And I said, God, what should I do? He said, I said, should I go say something? He said, don't do anything. I was like, why shouldn't I do anything? I couldn't figure it out. So I didn't. I would say the next day, I was talking to my nephew. I told my nephew, you know, I was talking to him about the people in the, in the in the in the um the parents the person who cut my hair I said this person who cuts my hair he always messes it up he said yeah he's the owner <laughs> he's a young guy he's like younger than me like in his 20s he said yeah his dad died and now he owns a shop and now I see why God said don't say anything if I would have gone to the shop and said hey this guy messed up my haircut he owned a shop who messed up my hair and I would have had a bad situation so therefore ask god what you should do you can't go wrong asking god whatever he says do do it if he says don't do anything pray about it don't do anything pray about it leave it alone if he says if he says do something number two then okay, so he, sometimes he will say don't say anything 
pray about it. Let me handle it. If he says to do that, let him handle it. Trust him. I know for me, it's irritating to me if I'm mad at somebody and I have to let God deal with them. But trust me, if he said, let him do it. If you do it, you're going to mess something up. That's why he said, let him handle it. Or that person can't receive it. Okay, if they can't receive it from you, it'll be a problem. Trust him. If he said, let me handle it. He has a plan. Leave it in his hands. Now, if he says, say something, do you have to ask God, when do I say something? And what do I say and how? Okay? Because if you say something, you have to have the right timing. Timing is important with people. This happened to me a couple of weeks ago. My, I have a lot of stories with my sister. <laughs> but my sister, she I forgot what she did. And we were in the kitchen. And God said to me, "Don't." I remember him saying it. Don't say anything right now. And I said something that time. And then I said, I said what I said. I remember what I said. I remember the situation. But he said, don't say anything. Come to find out, I talked to her a couple of days later. I think what happened was, I think it's a situation where her friends, I think it's a situation where her friends, uh, her friend's son had got killed. I think this is a situation, it was another situation, and she was very upset at the time. And so when I said this to her, she responded to me also in a negative way as well, but she was already hurting. And when I said this to her, I added hurt on top of hurt she was already experiencing. And so therefore I made the situation worse that's why god said don't say anything so you have to have the right timing also if he tells you to say something he tells you you say okay god what should i say something he may say next week on at two next week uh next tuesday say something all right then you have to pray pray and pray and ask god to repent person's heart for what you want to say and ask god to show you what to say and how to say it. should you say it to them directly or should you write them a letter an email a text Show him what to do. ask him to show you what to do. Do not respond in anger without help from the Holy Spirit. Because we don't know what that person is thinking. And Pastor Doug, not Pastor Doug, this is another example from another book. We have a group on Mondays called Emotional Healing Group. And I'm going to give you another example, but I'm going to use it in a different way. Jimmy Evans talked about a man in his church. He's a pastor. He did something to Pastor Jimmy. I don't remember what he did. And he made Pastor Jimmy very upset. And he had unforgiveness in his heart towards the man. And later on, God showed Pastor Jimmy that the man had some hurts himself in the past. And what he was seeing was a manifestation of something that happened to the man in the past. The same thing with people. Sometimes you see people manifesting actions and it's actually another problem in their heart, in their life that you see an action manifested from. And one person that we all know, should I say this, Lord? I'll say it. Donald Trump. Now, I know Americans know. I know a lot of people are mad that it seems like every time he does something, he gets away with it. Every time he gets away, every time he gets away. And I say, God, please give us some justice to this man. It's ridiculous. And Lord showed me this. Lord showed me that he has been hurt somehow in the past. And so what we see is a manifestation of a hurt that happened to him when he was younger. And that's manifesting in the actions you see him doing. And because God understands what he did, God is to be merciful to him. So we don't know why a person is doing something. The best thing to do is ask God what to do. And you don't know what they're going through. My, my, my godmother gave me an example about this. If you are in a store, in a restaurant, and your waitress is rude to you, some people will report her or he or she, he or she, report them to the manager. My, 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 my godmother said, Nicole, you don't know what's going on with that person. They could lost their spouse, their child. They could be having some kind of problem. And what you see them manifesting, something else is bothering them. Just pray, just pray for them and just let God deal with it. So a lot of times someone is rude to you, disrespectful to you. You don't know what's going on with them. Ask God what to do, how to respond, and do what he says. That's my number one, my number one thing. Whatever, however you respond, you have to ask God. What you should do? when and how what you should do when should you do it and how until and also give yourself a couple of days to calm down and think rationally and then respond now if god tells you to write something like write the person a letter or email let somebody else read it for you 
And then before you send it, because you may say some real bad inflammatory things, the person say, wait a minute, don't send that, you know, edit that and let them tell you what to change and go and pray about it and let God help you with that. So if you're going to say something to me in an email or a text, or you're going to write something, let somebody proofread it first before you send it. And give yourself a couple of days before you send this will. Write it, let somebody read it, pray over it. You keep reading it and thinking about it. And then say, okay, God, is this, is, should, I, is, should I send it now? Is it ready? Then send it. Your number one, your number one source, I would say this to also Miss Kelly, to any situation you have is God. Because you don't know what the person's going through. You don't know what they went through before they met you. You don't know what's going on and why. And you don't even know how they're going to respond to you either. And so if he says, don't do anything, don't do it. Even though it may make us feel better if we say something, you don't know what's going to happen when you, when you respond. If God says, leave it alone, let me handle it, leave it alone and trust him. Because if you engage, you may cause a worse problem, hurt them. So let God handle it. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something new today. So I'm just going to summarize what I said. If you came, if you might have came late, because I know I started off a rebroadcast. We said that anger is not bad. Anger is a morally neutral emotion. It's not the anger that's the problem. It's how we respond in anger. Anger lets you know that something may or may not be going on wrong or something needs to be adjusted. And usually we have anger because of we feel hurt, there's an injustice going done, been done, sometimes people die, different things happen to us and we respond in anger. And the anger is a secondary emotion to another problem that's going on in you. Now I'm gonna, list, I'm gonna go over the list again, just in, case, just in case people didn't hear from the beginning. These are some things that cause anger. Um, if you feel hurt, if there's guilt, shame, you, a person feels powerlessness, powerlessness, betrayal, insecurity, dash hopes, feeling trapped, um, unmet expectations, unmet needs, envy, jealousy, resentment, pride, low self-esteem, failure, a sense of worthlessness, loneliness, depression, worry, anxiety, stress, feeling pressure, remorse, exhausted, exhaustion, fatigue, disappointment, and grief. Those are all reasons that we get angry. Um, also, if you have to wait a long time, things like that. So it's not the, the situation that's called, is the cause of the anger. It's something that's going to, it's triggering inside of us. I also used to hear my sister talk about triggers. Sometimes things can trigger those emotions in you. So we need to recognize what our triggers are, and then we're going to learn how to respond positively. So these are some questions for us to consider. Is that somebody you know, or do you have a problem with anger? What have you or they done about it? So my question is this, do you know somebody with a problem with anger? Or do you have a problem with anger? What have they done about it? Or what have you done about it? I know I'm having a problem with anger. That's why I started the group because I got the book in response to this to help me. And God said for me to start this group. The next thing, what has worked or been helpful about bringing bringing forth a positive change in that anger. All right. What has done, what has, what has happened to you that what happened to that person or you that's brought a positive change in response to that situation of anger. This is what we need to do. This is all from the book. The book I'm reading is called overcoming emotions that destroy. All right. It's by Chip Ingram and Dr. Becca Johnson. So think about a time you got angry. All right. And think about how you could have responded differently. So think about a time you got angry and think about a time and think about how, what you could have done differently to change that. I know this morning and yesterday, Pastor Alder, I got into a little, got, into, got, into, got, into, got, into, got us, got into, we got into a little disagreement. All right. And I got angry with him because of something he did or he did not do. And one thing I know, I have problem with this. I don't know if anybody has this problem for me. I am a scientist. My, my first degree is in biology. My bachelor's degree is in biology. So I think according to logic and reason. So, and because I'm a scientist. So for me, if someone does something that's not seem logical or like common sense, it irritates me. So because I assume in my mind what's logical to me is logical to everybody else. 
And God had to show me this. Whatever you think is logical or common sense, somebody else may not think of that way. What you think is easy, somebody else may find it hard. And so I had to realize that if I think somebody's doing something that should be a certain way, let them have the freedom to do it their way. And what I always think may or may not be always accurate. And so I had to see that if I see somebody doing something that doesn't make sense to me, it's not logical, it irritates me. I have to realize that everybody doesn't think the way you think and give them the freedom to think differently. So that's something, I don't know if that's anybody needs that, but um, so I got upset because he did something I thought there would be a logical way to do it another way. He didn't do it that way and it irritated me. And I ended up responding in a whole bad way. And so we have to realize sometimes that what we think is common sense Somebody else may not think it's common sense. What we think is easy might not think it's easy. I was talking to somebody today and they were saying that, um, you know, that person should make that excuse. Now, to you, we may think that's an excuse, but to them, it may, it may be really rational to them or maybe a reason. So we can't, that's, that's actually pride. I heard about that at pride. When we think we know something better, we think somebody should do something our way, it makes us upset. We have to understand that we are not the end all and be all of understanding, of wisdom, and, and knowledge and common sense. So that's something we have to also, I know I have to work on. Okay. Now, especially for stuffers and leakers, but these spewers will already notice, but especially for stuffers and leakers, but also spewers. Ask somebody that you trust to tell you a time they saw you got angry. I'm going to put all these questions on, on Facebook so you can look at them again if you want to look at them again. Ask somebody that you trust about a time they saw you got angry and ask them to tell you how they think you express anger. So ask somebody about a time you got angry, somebody you trust, pray about it first, and then ask them, how do you, how do they think you express anger and talk to them about it. Now on the index card, or when you get home, I recommend you get a notebook and take notes about what you're reading. Get the book. I'm going to put it again. Let me put it, let me put it in, the, in the chat. You got to get the book. It's called, one second. It's called Overcoming. I need glasses, guys, so I have to get close to the screen. I'm sorry. My nephew said, oh, Nicole, you're so close to the screen. I know, babe. I got to get some glasses. Um, overcoming Emotions That Destroy. Oops. My nephew's computer, he isn't really sensitive because he games on it. And so you touch it really lightly and it moves. So I'm not used to this. Give me a second, guys. Okay. I'll put the D. I'll put destroy, guys. It's destroy. Overcoming emotions that destroy. I'm going to put all this on Facebook, on the Anger Management 101 group, and also on my Facebook page. And get the book. It's called Overcoming Emotions Destroy by Chip Ingram and Becca, Dr. Becca Johnson. Get the book and go through it. That's what I'm going through now. Also, oh man, I apologize, guys. I did not do this good. God, I need some glasses. Okay, here we go. Almost. And I'm on my nephew's computer, guys. I apologize. This computer is real strange to me, guys. It's, it's not what I'm used to. He has it very sensitive and I have to be real careful with it. So I put the capital E. So the book is called Overcoming Emotions That Destroy by Dr. by Chip Ingram and Dr. Becca, Dr. Dr. Becca Johnson. Go to the um the Google Play Store or the or the, or the, or the um, Apple App Store and get the Chip Ingram app. On the Chip Ingram app is also this his message on this as well. So get the Chip Ingram app. I'm gonna put a link to the app. I was supposed, supposed to do this last week. I forgot. God reminded me to that. So I forgot to do this. I'm going to put a link to all this. I'm going to put this on the um, Anger Management Group. It's called Anger Management 101. That's our group. I'm going to put all this in the group. But I'll also put it on my, my Facebook page. I'm going to put a link to the app. We'll try to figure out how to do that. Put a link to the app there and a copy of the book, a picture of the book there so you can get it. He has a lot of amazing messages on anger. You can just type in Chip Ingram messages on anger or chip ingram anger on youtube i highly recommend you also subscribe to his youtube page he has amazing messages about emotions if you're married he has a lot of good information about marriage we're going to talk about next week about also we talked about also um how to talk to people about angry 
about anger, how you feel. He also has like a phrase you say. I'll talk about this next week on how to express your anger. How do you talk to somebody? It's like a I feel message. So you can actually tell people, I feel this way. I wish you would. And it's like you can tell them how you feel. You tell them what you want to have. You're not demanding something, but you tell them what you would like to see. And it'll also help you when you're, when you're speak, speaking to somebody angry. We'll talk about that more next week. So uh, check out the our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is Love Life Ministries International. Oh, guys, God heal my eyes and give me some glasses. <laughs> I could have had glasses, guy, a long time ago. I just have not gone to get my eyes checked. This is just like not me being on top of things. There's no reason for me not to get glasses. It really isn't. My sister keeps telling me to get glasses because I keep leaving stuff all over. Bread comes everywhere and not knowing it. So go to Love Five Ministries International. Um, our group is called it's, our group is called Anger Management One on One. That's on Facebook. Join our group, and um, I'll put different things up there uh, in the group from the book and things like that. And I'll put the questions that I just mentioned. All right, so we're done. I hope you learned something new. And we'll be back next week um, with some more things about this. When you, If you get the Chip Ingram app, he has a lot of good messages on marriage. He has something called Love One Another. He actually has a um, message called Love One Another. It talks about how to deal with people who are, who are um, difficult to deal with. You can go on YouTube and put in Love One Another, Chip Ingram, how to deal with difficult people. Amazing message there. Um, he has a lot of good things about marriage and love on his app. You can also go to his, let me think, he has a, um, let me give you the name of it. He has a website. If you go to his website, he has all, he has messages there, more messages. He has um, downloads for you there. Um, let me see, what's the name of it? Uh, let me see, what's it called? Trying to find it. Wait a minute. Ah, what is it called? What is it called, guys? Let me see. I went there today. I'll put it in the chat. Oh, it's called Living on the Edge. Living on the Edge. You can type in Living on the Edge. And you can get more information. He has more messages there. That's his um, that's his uh, website, Living on the Edge. I highly recommend you go there. You can get all the messages there for free. Um, everything is for free. You can download it for free. That's what I like about him. He does it for free. Some people make you pay for it, he doesn't. So you can get all his messages for free um, on his on his uh, app. You can download them from his from the web from his website. I misspelled Edge, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, e D G E. You can you can download his messages there for free. You can get the MP3. You can order them if you want to buy them. You can have them shipped to you. You can get the notes. Everything is there. He's amazing. So I give God the work for Castle Chip because he does everything for free. So people make you pay for these things. He does it for free. So I'm, we're, we're done. I'm always in our broadcast. And thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something new. Hope you come back next week. Next week again, we're going to be here again at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to rebroadcast again at 8 p.m. as well. So I hope you learned something new. I hope you recognize yourself if you're a spewer, a, uh, a stuffer, or a leaker. And we'll talk more about how what to do about this next week in the following weeks. So I want to thank you for coming. And always end our broadcast, giving us opportunity to receive Jesus as the Lord of our life. Jesus, God, the Father, and Holy Spirit are amazing. They are amazing, amazing, amazing. I thank God for Pastor Chip, for Pastor uh, Jimmy Evans, and all the so many men and women of God who he's given special insight into these different issues. And because of them, and because of them, and even my situation with my fiance and problems in the past. God uses that to help us help other people. And then God is so loving. He'll even sometimes let us go through pain so we can use it to help other people. And God is a loving, gentle, merciful, compassionate, faithful, everything good God. He's not angry. He's not mad at you. He's actually looking in heaven at you, loving you, and so happy with you. God considers you a masterpiece. He thinks you are amazing. Even when we mess up, God's not mad at us. He's still loving us. and He's wanting to help us to change. Now, if we continue sinning too much and he's warning us and we know better, he may punish us. But that's like after a long, long time. And one thing I love about God is this. He looks at your past. He looks at what's going on in your life. 
the current fool, he makes a decision. He, they are, when I say they, I mean God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. They are amazing. They will never leave you, forsake you. You can, they will always, you can always come to them. They always come through. They may not come when you want them to come, but they're coming. In 28 plus years of serving God, I have never seen God not answer prayer that was in his perfect will that I prayed. Every prayer I've prayed, every prayer I've prayed since 1999, I'm sorry, since 1994 until now, that was in his will, he has answered 100% of the time. He has never, ever left me hanging. He has never, ever not come through for me if it was his will. Now, I prayed prayers that were not in his will. He did, not, he did not answer those. And I found out later on why it was not his will. But all the ones I prayed in his will answered 100% of the time. You can always, always count on God. He would never leave you or forsake you. He would never give up on you. I've seen people that drive me bananas that have given up on a thousand times. And God tells me, don't give up on that person. Keep going. He would never give up on you. If you think about the man who wrote most of the, the New Testament, Apostle Paul, he was a murderer. He murdered Christians. He was one of the most mighty used men in the world. God is not as discarded because of our sins and mistakes. He loves us through them and makes us and works with us and brings us on the other side, and makes us like him. So if you want to know this loving God, he's not in heaven looking to beat you up. He's in heaven loving you. He's actually singing about you. It says this in, I think it's the book of Zephaniah. It says, Lord our God in our midst is mighty. He will say, he rejoiced over us in singing. God is in heaven singing about us. He loves us so much. He sings about us. He is madly in love with us. He is a lover, not a fighter. He's a lover, not a, not a beat you up, beat you up all the time. I mean, he will fight for you and defend you, but he's not trying to hurt us and beat us. He's looking to love us. He's not mad at us when we make a mistake. He wants to help us and help us to change. He's always looking for a way to bless us and, and prosper us and make us more like him. That's what he's looking at. So when you mess up, he's not saying, oh, she messed up again. Or, oh, he messed up again. He said, oh, let me send my baby some help to get them out of this. They need some help. The Bible says anytime we have a temptation, he even makes a way of escape. He, so it's like he sees, okay, she's going to get to do this. Let me give her this a way of escape. So he's always looking to actually help us, bless us, and make us like him. God is amazing. So he wants to get to know this God. And you never known him. You've never known him before. I want to say a prayer. In this prayer, we're going to invite him to come into our heart and, and forgive us for our sins and start relationship with him. Now, if you have said this prayer, but you know that your relationship with God is not what you need to be. You maybe you need to come closer to God or you have some sin, you need to rededicate. I want to put this also in the same prayer. And finally, speaking in tongues, if you want to speak in tongues, speaking in tongues is a, one type of speaking in tongues is a Holy Ghost language where God, the Holy Spirit, inside of us, if you're saved, will pray to God the Father and Jesus, and he himself also answers. So this time speaking in tongues is prayer. It's us praying to God through God. There are two other types of speaking in tongues. The other two is are um, the other two are God talking to us. He was speaking supernaturally to get somebody who's saved a tongue. And they'll speak in tongues and they'll interpret what somebody else interpret. That's another one. The third one is in 1 Corinthians 12. That is when God gives somebody an office gift. It's a gift to use in their life for whatever purpose he has. He does not give that to everybody. That one is specific to certain people. Just like people have people have gifts of healing and gifts of like supernatural faith. The same with this particular gift of speaking in tongues. That one is an office gift that everyone doesn't get. That once again is God talking to us. I'm not talking about those two. I'm talking about the one that's for everybody, which is us talking to God. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 17, these signs shall follow they that believe. He didn't say some that believe. It didn't say maybe some people can do it. He said they. That it was anybody who can believe can speak in that. The second on the list was they were speaking new tongues. So if you want to speak in tongues, also, I'll include that also in this prayer. So this prayer would include coming to God for the first time, coming back to God, and speaking in tongues. If you want any of those, repeat after me. You can pray it out loud or quietly to yourself. However you pray, God will hear you. So if you're interested in coming to God, coming back to God, and or speaking in tongues, pray this prayer with me right now. Here we go. Repeat after me. Lord God, 
Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, I believe you died. I believe you rose. I believe you live forevermore. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be Lord and Savior of my life. Satan, I renounce you. I renounce your evil works in my life. And I renounce my past life of evil with you. Lord Jesus, baptize me in Holy Spirit. Enable me to speak in tongues. I receive. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, my power. I'm running out of power, guys. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Email us at lovelifeministriesintl at gmail.com and let us know we can get to you and help you with your relationship of God. So if you want some more information on how, on some next steps with um with your relationship with God, email, I'll put it in instead of an M. Put an M instead of an N. Guys, I apologize. I need glasses. <laughs> I had to get these glasses. Email us at love life ministries at gmail.com. Let us know that you made that prayer. You prayed a prayer for the first time. If you pray to speak in tongues, I heard him. He said it's done. You're filled. You can speak in tongues now. If you pray for salvation, you pray this prayer, it's done. Try to just start speaking. If you start hearing some words that sound like something like that, I believe that's him. Repeat those words and he will you start to see your language come. All right. Well, I just realized it's 512 and we have prayer right now. So I'm late. So I'm going to have to reschedule prayer for six because um, I need to go to the restroom and get something to drink and get started again. So I hope you learned something new. We'll be back again. Next week at the exact same time at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll rebroadcast again. I mean, at 8. We have other groups. We have our emotional healing group on Mondays. We're reading a book, we're reading a book called um, Emotions 21 Day Ill, Inner Healing. Sorry, 21 Day Inner Healing Journey by Jimmy Evans. That's on Mondays at the exact same time. On Wednesdays, we have our relationship goals group, which is about relationships. We're reading the book, Relationship Goals, How to Win at Dating, Marriage, and Sex by Michael Todd. On Thursdays, is our relationship goals challenge group we're reading his book called relationship goals challenge and that's for couples and friday um we don't have any activities on friday yet except for prayer and also on thursdays is our heart of gold ministry to uh people in the military our relationship goals group relationship goals challenge emotional healing group and this group are all at 3 p.m eastern standard time or 8 p.m eastern standard time the heart of gold military ministry is going to be at is at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll rebroadcast again at 7. And then we have prayer daily at 10 a.m. and at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, oh, I think it's going to be 6. I'll, it's going to be 6. Why did I put it at 5? It's going to be at 6. I made a mistake on the fly. It's going to be at 6. I remember I changed yesterday because yesterday was my, my nephew's concert. But it's going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's prayer twice a day. We're, at, we're on a month wide fast praying for the world. And finally, we have church services at on Sunday at 10 a.m. at uh, for teens, at 12 p.m. for children, at 2 p.m. for adults. And then next next Sunday, we have having our healing conference. We had a reschedule last week. We're going to be again. Our healing conference on this Sunday at 4 p.m. All Eastern Standard Time. I know it's a mouthful. So if you want to join us with fun, some of these events, we're welcome to have you. We'd love to have you. If you want to join our church or our ministry, you can email us at Love Life Ministries International, INTL, and we'll get back to you on how to join. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to close out in prayer and be, we'll be finished. Lord, thank you for all my brothers and sisters that joined us today. Bless them. Help us all to overcome this anger, anger overcome anger. Pray, Lord God, you're going to show us this week the change we can make. I pray we're going to make you be able to get, get the app in the book and study, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, to make us like you. 
Forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us, Lord God, and bring us back next week. Meet all our needs. Anyone who has any healing needs, heal them and make them whole. Any, any, any needs any of us have, Lord God, any needs, spiritually, financially, personally, relationship, any single need, ask Lord God to meet it. Meet those needs, Lord God. Meet our needs. Heal us and make us whole and meet our needs. Lord God, keep us safe. Actually, for angels being gathered around about us, I pray we're going to be at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people. Keep us safe. Bring us back next week and help us, Lord God, to overcome and make us like you. Thank you for all these things, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us, guys and gals. Hope to see you back next week. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.